a century on from locomotion and rocket. Most road transport was still based on that faithful animal, the horse, whilst the railways used it for road deliveries. However, the Great War had hastened the development of other forms of transport, motorcycles and cars becoming widely available. The majority of railways, battered and bruised from the conflict, were amalgamated in 1923 to form four large companies, the Great Western, Southern, LMS and LNER, the Big Four. Holidays were becoming more common amongst the masses, so the railways in the 1920s catered for the growth and demand, especially in the summer, as people headed for the seaside. Hearn Bay was a classic genteel Victorian holiday resort, which had built up a substantial trade, middle-class holidaymakers of the 1920s having no thoughts of overseas holidays. The promenades beloved of the Victorians had seen little change, but Steam's great rival, the internal combustion engine, was changing everything, as even our seaside recreations bore witness. Onshore, steam traction faced multiple rivals. The electric tram cars had already taken much of the local traffic, and private motoring would change forever the nation's travelling habits. But in the 20s, steam still ruled on most railways. Some railways were not affected by the grouping, including a number serving the capital. Severely affected by the alternative forms of transport, London's railways were the earliest to go wholeheartedly into electrification. And thus, by the 1920s, steam was already on the wane. These metropolitan railway tank engines were about to be replaced by electrics. Strangely enough, steam on the Met, used on freight, outlasted steam on the main line railways, as well as the electric locomotives. Steam was well entrenched on private railway systems in the 20s. Although we tend to think of the mainline companies when picturing steam, there were probably as many of these small industrial shunters in existence as there were shunters on the Big Four. These industrial railway complexes and the steam shunters were excluded from the grouping as they weren't public service companies. Another type of railway to be excluded from the grouping was the self-contained local railway company. Whilst many branch lines had been built in the Victorian era as feeder lines to the great trunk route companies and had been absorbed into those companies, a number remained independent. Some of these were narrow gauge lines, incompatible with the national standard gauge system. This 1914-built Manning Wardle 062 tank was delivered to the Little Southwold Railway in East Suffolk, just a month before war broke out, when it was still prosperous enough to buy a new locomotive and pay regular dividends. How quickly times changed!